Guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm super excited because we are talking about something I'm extremely passionate about, and that is bags. Now, if you're like me, then you've probably had about 12 different bags this year, not actually 12, but you're always in search of the perfect bag and kind of paring down what you take with you. And today I'm going to show you my everyday carry for photo and video that don't really interchange. And without further ado, let's just jump right into the bag itself. So this is the Zgin Yaoi. It's a company from Hong Kong called Zgin. I used to use the Vinta bag. If you don't know what it is, I'll link a video below of another YouTuber I thought made a great video on that bag. So I'll link that below. The main thing I wanted out of a camera bag was something that I could hold my gear and also a couple personal items as well. Or some things that could maybe interchange like different pouches and stuff like that. And the problem with most bags that I found was they were either fully camera bag and really looked like camera bags or they were just massive bags that were too big. This one is so far the perfect balance between both. One thing that I absolutely love is you've got that open top access right here where everything can just go right in here. You just saw some B-roll, so all that stuff is on the floor in front of me right now, but I will show you a picture of this bag packed at the end of the video. One thing I love is this bag is very deep. For instance, my 80 millimeter, I can fit this standing up right into the bag. That itself makes a huge difference because now all of a sudden you can maximize this space as much as you want. I also love that it has quick access. So I'm able to just put my camera right in there and grab my camera while the, while the bag is still on my back. Front pocket right here, you can kind of throw whatever you want in there. The roll top. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I was never really a fan of the roll top look until I got this bag and I can't say how much I appreciate it and here's why. Because generally when you're using a bag and you need to unzip up on top, you're, you're constantly unzipping and re-zipping. With this, you're, you're just rolling it down. It's actually very satisfying. Roll it down, clip, clip, done. And you also get all of this extra space. Like this is, that's a lot of extra space. One of my favorite features of this bag is actually like not really that great of a feature, but like I, I love it. And that's the side access laptop pouch. I can carry a 13 inch MacBook. I've got no problem carrying my 11 inch iPad Pro, which is what I use pretty much for everything and what I'm using for this video right now. Anyway, I'm not doing a full review of the bag itself, but kind of what I put in the bag. Let's start with each piece individually. We've got the Anchor Power Bank. This is a 21,000 ma power bank, pretty much good for honestly charging your phone about three or four times. Dispatch camera strap, Pelican card case. The Peter McKinnon variable ND filter by Polar Pro. This is the uh, 77 mil two to five stop version. They have a six to nine as well. I decided that to start the two to five was probably more usable, even though really what I want is three to six. Leave a comment if you know what I mean about that because you're kind of like on a really bright day, you're really pushing the, the five stop range with the 2.8 aperture. You can still stop down, but you're kind of just always in that area. It's nice though if you are shooting outside in the city and then you're walking inside to a place, you don't really have to take the ND filter off. Either way, the build quality, the functionality, everything about this thing is worth every penny. XF 10 to 24 Fujinon F4 lens. This is kind of my primary vlogging lens. It's stabilized. My X-H1 is stabilized. Gets the job done. I kind of, I wish it was a 2.8. I wish Fuji would just make a, a 14 to 35 or even a 14 to 23 F 2.8. That would be prime. Fuji, please, please. Man, Frodo Pixie Mini. This is my, this is my Gorilla Pod. Really good for vlogging. Good when you just need to set up a little tripod. Super sturdy, build quality on this is amazing. Thank you for making this, Manfrotto. The X-H1 battery grip, it's a battery grip. GoPro Hero 7 Black with two batteries. I use the GoPro a lot for quick vlogging or when my camera's packed away and I just wanna take a few shots. I'm in an area that I don't really feel comfortable having my entire camera out, but I can still use this. Completely overpriced, massive, I don't even know how you could even come up with this thing. It's the uh, the 3.5 millimeter mic adapter for this. And I'll use that with the, basically what you do is you take the GoPro, put it in here, cage on like any other case. Sometimes it's a little difficult. Like that, plug it into the port. Take your video micro, add it through here. And then a lot of people don't know that with the micro you can, clip the wire right into here, that stops it from dangling down into your video. If you were to watch this 
and have it dang like that, you get the dead cat just riding right into your, your frame. But if you just clip it to the side, you don't get that anymore. So now you've got pretty much the perfect mini vlog cam for a nice sunny day. The problem is you can't really put ND filters on the GoPro. I know that Polar Pro makes them and people make ND filters for the GoPro, but something that I found anyways with the stabilization, because it's electronic, I think it messes up with the, uh, when you throw an ND filter on it, it, it messes it up and it, it gets really jittery. Maybe that's just me. If you have any experience with that, shoot me a message or something because I can't seem to get stabilization work with the GoPro Hero 7. If you look at my last video, the 72 hours in Qualicum BC, I'd say about 50% of that video was shot on the GoPro. I just picked this up because I was looking for something to kind of carry the miscellaneous items that you basically need before or after a shoot, like after you've done and you're kind of loading your cards and doing all that other stuff. I mean, I just, I just found this low pro wallet thingy. What's in here right now is um, a Moment lens pen, an actual pen, a Tide to Go, and a Sharpie. That pretty much covers all of my uh, analog pen needs. Uh, a field notes, lightning cable, watch cable, and this thing which I have to use every two seconds, which is the USB-C card reader for my iPad. The Aperture M9. There's tons of reviews on this thing, just look them up. This is one of the most useful pieces of kit that you could have in your bag for lighting. You, you can light your face with this. This is the, actually, I've used this as a key light before just to light anything really. This is super valuable to have. It's about 60 bucks, it's worth it. And all that fits just in one of these rolls. A revolver mirror, travel mug, decanter thing. This carries hot and cold. In the morning, I will fill this with water, drink that, fill it up with coffee, drink that, then fill it up with water, and I'll keep alternating throughout the day with whatever. It's completely tight, so I have no issues putting this in my bag. It looks really cool, too. One of my favorite things, this vi voila, viola, vole, I don't know how to pronounce the name. It's a vole, vole, vole strap, and this one is by Moment, and it's basically just a belt. I've used this so many times for so many things, like, especially that light, I'll wrap this around the light, and I will wrap it to something so I can strap it somewhere. But if you need to wrap your cables around a, a pole or anything like that, these things come in handy. It's one of those items that like you, you come up with a million uses for it. 500 gig Samsung SSD. And then you know I'm a huge fan of this. Uh, this just kind of is all of the personal items that I need on a, a regular basis. This just goes into the top. And if I'm, if I'm not taking my camera and on a bare minimum, this is what I take out with me. I'll link my video below on this bag that I've already shot. This is super awesome, great for airports, travel, you name it, it's good for it. My EDC knife at the moment is the Bug Out 535 by Benchmade in the Ranger Green. It's just, I love it. I love everything about this. Funny story actually. When I went to buy this, I placed my order online, super stoked, one day shipping free. I get an email the next morning that says, hey, we received your order, but we don't accept Visa debit. <laughs> I was a little bit choked, but I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna drive down. It's across town from where I live. So I drove in, saw the saw this knife sitting in the case. I was like, uh, I'll take that one. And the guy was like, this one's our clearance and they have a defect. What's what's the defect? He opens it up, kind of looks at it and he goes, I actually don't know. So he, he asked the tech in the back and he says, oh, the spring was broken and it got returned. So we replaced the spring, but it completely works now. And I'm like, well, do you believe in it? He's like, yeah, yeah, I do. So I looked at it, tried it out, everything seems fine. And then the kicker is he goes, well, you know Benchmade has a lifetime warranty, so if anything goes wrong with it, you just send it back. Something just cut out with the recording, I don't know what it was, but either way, I'm still already working on this video right now, which is kind of cool, because as you're watching this, I'm editing it, and the video is right there. So anyway, I say, fine, well, what's the, what's the cost? What's the, what's the difference? And these, uh, these retail for 180, and he says, well, uh, with with that issue, we're selling for a hundred bucks. So nothing's wrong with it. He goes, no, we fixed it. I'm like, okay, so a hundred dollars. He's like, yeah. So I, I bought that one. So I got this knife for a hundred bucks instead of 180. Awesome. My main microphone is actually the Rode Video Mic Pro, which is what I'm using to record this video right now. I wonder if that's what tweaked my video last time. Amazing microphone. Again, look up a review on it if you want to know more about it. There's plenty. Love it. it sound is great. And then the last thing that we have is the X-H1, which is actually being used to film. I'm going to show it to you this way. There it is, tucked away. And there's my X-H1. With the 16 to 55 on it. Absolutely love this lens. This is the lens that stays glued onto my camera. 
Um, that's the one that's default on the on the camera. And I realized I didn't actually talk to, I showed you the 80 millimeter, but I didn't really talk about it. That's this guy right here. It's an 80 millimeter 2.8 macro. I use this for food photography mostly. Blazing fast lens. Anyway guys, thanks for tuning in. That's it for me today. Um, I gotta clean all this stuff up. And uh, I don't really have time, so I'm just gonna... Still kinda need to do the front pouches. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.